Hi, this is Behfor, your host, and today in this video, I want to set up a VPN server at my home, more specifically an open VPN server. I've already talked about VPN and OpenVPN before in other videos, but today I want to set up my TP-Link Archer A7 as a VPN server. But before we start, please allow me to introduce my uh, assistant before, but with a digit, uh, because he's my virtual assistant. He's not real. Uh, he's my uh, kind of my own creation. Um, he actually appeared in a couple of videos a long time ago, uh, like that one uh, where we talked about private and public IP addresses. You might remember. Uh, but I figured maybe I should use him more often in the videos. Hopefully he can uh, help me with some of the projects. Um, but I'm sure uh, you know that I'm the real one. Uh, even though he looks kind of like me, quite like me actually, um, he's virtual and I'm the real one. Okay, um, so uh, maybe you wanna say something, a few words? Absolutely. Uh, hi, thank you very much for tuning in. We are hoping you're enjoying these videos. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because it will help us a lot. Yeah, um, well, thank you. Uh, um, I'm, I'm kinda proud of him. Um, good job. Um, okay, uh, so let's begin this video. Before I set up the VPN server, I would like to quickly talk about how someone can actually benefit from a VPN connection. If you already know that and probably want to jump to the configuration part, feel free to fast forward to here. Alright, let's say for example, if I set up my own VPN server at home and I leave the house, even if I go to a different country, as long as I have access to internet, I can start a VPN connection to my VPN server at home, which is going to put me virtually on my home network, as if I'm physically connected to it. This should allow me to remotely and securely access my network resources. Now, I can choose whether I want to use this as a split tunnel or a full tunnel. As a split tunnel, only if the destination is on this network. For example, if I need to access my files here, then the tunnel will be used. But if the destination is somewhere else, maybe I'm trying to access a website, let's say google.com, then the local gateway will be used for that. So basically, this way my public IP address will not change and will remain the same. However, as a full tunnel, everything will actually go through the tunnel, regardless of what the destination is. In this case, if I go to the google.com, it will go this way, and therefore my public IP address will also change, as if I'm in country A. So when I'm traveling to a new country, as an internet user, this can help me to stay securely in my home country, even though I'm not physically there. And if there is maybe some sort of restrictions on internet access in this country, this can actually help me to bypass that. I can also still be able to access the websites or services that might be only available for the users in country A. Now, because the VPN tunnel is encrypted and secure, even if I'm not traveling, I can still make use of it. For example, if I'm using a public Wi-Fi which is not secure, I can use a VPN connection which is gonna add a layer of encryption and make my connection more secure. Hi, um, I hope you like the animation and everything because I did all of that. Um, he doesn't know that much. Um, I'm actually the brain of this channel. Next, I'm gonna show you how to configure a VPN server on a TP-Link Archer A7. Alright, so I've logged into my Archer A7 wireless router. I've already talked about this router and some of its features in other videos. I'll add the links to those videos in the video description in case you're interested. Now, to set up the VPN server, I will go to the Advanced tab, then the VPN server. There are two types of VPN servers, OpenVPN, which is what we're going to set up today, and PPTP, which is very old and not as secure. So whenever I have the OpenVPN option, I personally won't even think about PPTP. First things first, obviously I will need to enable the VPN server. Then I should also select a port number for the VPN connection. By default, the OpenVPN protocol is using port UDP 1194, which should normally work fine. And it is also recommended to use a UDP port rather than a TCP port. 
but I can still change this port number if I want to. And one good reason to do that is when this port has been blocked in a network, which in that case the VPN connection would also fail. So one solution to that problem is to change the OpenVPN port number to a port that hopefully has not been blocked. For example, the HTTPS, which is TCP443. Unfortunately though, as you can see, for some reason TP-Link has decided to only allow ports within this range, which is not very helpful. Next, I will need to choose a network address for the VPN clients. So when the clients connect to the VPN server, they will actually receive an IP address which is in this range. I'm happy with the default one and I'm not gonna change it. Client access is basically where I can choose whether the VPN tunnel should be a split tunnel or a full tunnel. And we already talked about this in the beginning of this video. I personally and definitely want to use a full tunnel. Because when I use a public Wi-Fi, then I can VPN to my home network to make my connection more secure. Certificate is used for the authentication purpose. And because it is the first time I'm creating the OpenVPN server, I'm gonna create a new certificate. Otherwise, I don't have to unless I want to update the certificate. I'm almost done on the server side and now if I export this configuration file, it will create a file with all the necessary information for the clients to connect. That information includes the public IP address of the wireless router which is necessary. But because this public IP address might change from time to time, I can use a DDNS address instead which is not gonna change. In that case, I can open the configuration file with a text editor, locate the public IP address and replace it with my DDNS address. If you don't know how you can get your DDNS address, then definitely check out this 2 minute tutorial where I show you how you can do that. Now it is time to set up our client or clients. I'm actually gonna use my Windows PC and also my Android phone and configure them so they can connect to the VPN server. First of all, I should install the OpenVPN software on my PC and the OpenVPN app on my phone. Then I will need to transfer the configuration file to these devices. Next I will need to import that file to the OpenVPN software. Now I'm all set and I can try to connect. Okay, the VPN server is up and running and I was able to test it by connecting to it I just wish I could add usernames and passwords for the clients too, just as an extra authentication method, because right now whoever has access to that configuration file can pretty much connect to my VPN server. So I'm gonna have to absolutely make sure no unauthorized person has access to that file. Uh, all right, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, share it if you think others might like it too, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time. Um, uh, are you sure you want to sit this close? Can you go back there? But why? Uh, social distancing? Uh, uh, don't worry, I'm not real. <coughs> I'm virtual. <coughs>